What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at the meter widget for TTK Bootstrap, Kinter, and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at the meter widget, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is awesome, has over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. To grab your free copy, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You can grab all my Kinter courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the meter widget in TTK Bootstrap. This thing is awesome and very customizable. We could do all kinds of stuff with this. You can see I've got it going up to 120%. You could change that to whatever you want. You can see there's the sort of dotted outline. You could also make that solid. You could change the color. You could change the text. You can increment it by any amount. Here I've got 5%. You can step up by any amount. Here I've got 10%. Step down. You can do it by buttons. You could do it by dragging and dropping. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Batch Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other TTK bootstrap videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. All right, so I've got a file I'm just calling it meter.py. And it's our basic TTK bootstrap starter code that we always have. And you can see we're using the superhero theme. We've imported TTK bootstrap as TB. And uh, the rest is just basic stuff. So all right, let's go ahead and create a meter. So I'm going to call this my underscore meter. And this is a tb.meter widget. And again, we're calling tb. Dot because we've imported TTK Bootstrap as tb. Now inside of here, there are tons of attributes that you can play around with. So just to get started, we want to put this in root. And let's give this a boot style of like danger to make it red. And again, all your TTK Bootstrap colors are available here. So primary, secondary, danger, info, success, light, dark, all the other ones are available. So okay, let's just my underscore meter dot pack this guy. Let's give this a pad Y of 50 to really push it down the screen. Now, one thing you're probably definitely going to want is the subtext. So let's go subtext equals and I'm just going to say um, tkinter learned. This is a meter on how much tkinter we have learned. So let's go ahead and save this and just see what we have right out of the box here. So let's head over to our terminal in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run python meter dot pi. And when we do, we get this empty zero, this empty circle with a zero in it, it says tkinter learn. So, okay, if I click on this, nothing actually happens. So we don't have much going on here. If I click on this, nothing happens. So first let's play around with being able to click on this and drag and drop. You have to specifically set that up. So let's come here and I'm just gonna put all these things on separate lines so they're easier to read. And to do that, we type in interactive. So do we wanna make it interactive? Yes, we do, right? So let me just do this because we're going to do a lot of these. So let's save this and run this and see what we have here. So now when I click on this, I can drag it and drop it. And you can see by default, it goes up to 100. And that's very cool. So if I leave it off, it just you know stays where it is. So all right, that's interesting. What if we want something next to the number? So 75, maybe we want to make this 75% or maybe on the left side, we want to put a dollar sign. Uh, what do we do to change the basically the label inside the main label? Well, we could do that. We can just change the text right to anything we want. So if I wanted a percentage, we could do that. We could also do text left. You know, uh, if we wanted a dollar sign, we could do that. So if we save this and run it, you can see in tiny little text, we get this dollar sign and percentage sign. And you could play around, around with the font size. And we'll look at that in maybe a minute. But I'm going to take off that dollar sign because that's silly. But uh, just keep in mind, that's how you would put that. That would be text left, obviously. So I'm just going to comment this one out. So we can create a meter type. By default, this is set to full. We can also have it semi. So let's go ahead and save this. Take a look at what this looks like. And here you see it's not all complete, right? It's just semi. So eh, that's a little weird. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to full, but I'm also going to comment can be semi, right? We can play around with the stripe thickness. And I'm just going to set this to, let's say 10. If we run this, now we get the sort of dashes, right? So that's cool. I really like the look of that. And again, you can change this to any number you want. You know, we could do, I don't know, 50 to make it really, well, 
let's just say really big. So one, two, three, four, five, right? Whatever. Maybe you want uh, just five, make it real skinny. Right? So you get these like almost tick marks. That's cool. Personally, I like 10, <laughs> but uh, anything you want, you can do that. We can change the meter size. So let's send this to 200. If we save this, well, let's change it to 400, make it really big. You can see, whoa, we've got a really big meter size now, right? So that's cool. Likewise, you can make it smaller by just, you know, making it smaller. So I'm going to put this at uh, 200 or so. Save this run it. There you go. Very nice. And just that easy. We can give this thing some padding, right? So let's go padding equals, and let's just blow it out. Let's say 50. Can't really tell the difference. Maybe it's padding on the outside. Probably. So I'll leave that at 50. We can set the amount used. So let's say we'll set it to 20. This is sort of like the default, what it is when it starts right up, All right? So by default, boom, it's just already at 20, right? So that's interesting. We can also change the amount total. And let's say I put it at 150. So before we had it at 100, 100%, now it's 150 is as high as it'll go. So, so if we run this, See, it's still at 20 by default. If I drag it all the way up, 130, 140, all the way up at the top is 150, right? Personally, I would always keep it at 100 because, you know, you're usually doing like 100%. A lot of times when you're using a meter of some sort, it's a percentage. But if you need it for any other thing, that's how you do that. And uh, very cool. Now, there are lots of other things you can play around with this very quickly. Let's head over here to the documentation. We could go to tkbootstrap.readthedocs.io. If you click on the style guide, it's not that useful. Come down here to meter. It just shows you basically the basic functionality. Uh, so I should mention, you could also change the subtext color and that's just with subtext style. So let's just come down here, give it a sub subtext style of, let's say, I don't know, success, something like that. Save this, run it. And now the subtext is that green success color that is hideous, right? So uh, let's just give this, um, I don't know, let's call it dark or eh, let's say light. I think that's maybe by default with this theme. Yeah, so by default, that's light colored. Very cool. So like I said, there's not much stuff right here, but if you want the information on this, you can go to the API section up here and then come down here in the widgets module, click on meter. And then here we get the API documentation, which is much more complete. So these are all the things you could play with. So arc range, you could do amount total. We did that amount used widget size, meter size, boot style. We did that meter type, full or semi. We did that meter thickness. We did that show text interactive. We looked at that stripe thickness. We looked at that text left, text, right text font. If you want to change the font size for the text in the center, you could use that subtext. We use that subtext style. We just did that. Subtext font, again, you could change the size of that if you want. So dash size 10. And then we have step size. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So pretty straightforward. That's how to make it look certain ways. Now, how do we actually use this? So let's say I drag this around and I end on 78. I need to know that it's at 78 programmatically. How do I do that? How do I know what it's at? Further, how can I change it by like maybe clicking on a button to increment it a certain amount? How can we do that? Well, let's take a look at that now real quick. Super easy. And let's come down here and let's create some buttons. So I'm going to call my underscore button. And this is going to be a TB dot button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, click me. And let's say five, right? So we want to click it and move the thing five. So let's give this a command of clicker. I don't know. And that's my underscore button dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. And now let's create this clicker function. Now, First, let's just, there's several, there's a couple of different ways. You could step it up or down, or you could set the amount used attribute of the widget. So uh, if we want to just create uh, a counter real quick, let's go global counter. And let's also just really quickly set this up here, global counter. And let's set the counter equal to five or something to start out with. And then inside of here, Let's say my underscore meter 
dot configure. And then we want to set the amount used to our counter. And then every time we click it, we want to increment our counter. So let's go plus equals five, right? Now, if we want to keep track of that, let's keep track on the button. So let's my underscore button dot configure. And let's set the text equal to, and let's create an F string. And let's say, click me. And then inside of here, let's pass my underscore meter. So to see what the meter is actually set on at any given time, you can call the amount used var. So this is a variable, and this needs to be a period. So this is a variable, sort of like a kinter variable that will keep track of this. So to get it, we need to dot get the amount used var. So, okay, that looks pretty good, except, oh, this should be amount used, not amount user. Anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see how this looks. Okay, so we started at 20, we wanna click me five, boom, it goes to 5%. Now it does not go to 25 because we just didn't program it to do that. We could easily have set the counter at 20 to start with and then incremented at five, but we didn't do that. Anyway, you get the idea, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, all the way up. Now, if we hit 100 and keep going, this will just keep going. So it keeps spinning, right? So we can programmatically fix that if we want. And also let's set our counter at 20 just because, and then to fix that, we would just come into our thing here and let's just say what? Let's go if counter is less than or equal to 100, then do all this stuff. And I'm just gonna tab it all over. All right, that looks good. So let's save this and run it. We start at 20, boom, it goes to 25, 30, blah, 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 all the way up to 95, 100. We keep clicking at 100, it doesn't go past 100. So that's one way you can do that. So that's how to sort of increment it manually if you just wanna set the amount used. And you could do that, there's nothing wrong with that. There's sometimes you probably would wanna do that, but there are even better ways to do that. We can step. So let's grab this and let's copy and paste a couple more buttons in here. And I'm gonna call this my button two and my button three. So then here as our text, instead of click me five, let's say step up. And here instead of click me five, let's say step down. And let's give this a command of up and let's give this one a command of down. So, all right, let's go up and create these two functions. So let's define up and let's define down. So here we can step up in any amount. So let's just go my underscore meter dot step. And then inside of here, we pass however many places we wanna step. So if we wanna step 10, we could just do it like that. Same thing with down, it's the exact same process. Instead of 10 though, it's, let's say we want it to go negative 10, right? Just that easy and uh, kind of all there is to it. Now let's make this a little bit bigger so these all fit. 570, let's come back over here and let's see, let's run this guy. Now one weird thing about the steps, that still didn't quite fit. Uh, we started at 20, if we step up from here, it'll go backwards. So now it goes 10, five, it's zero, now it'll go forward again in, in steps. So just sort of keep that in mind. So if we run this again and we wanna step down, again, it goes the opposite direction. So if we start, actually, let's just start at zero here just to make this easier to follow. So amount used, let's put this at zero. Okay, so now if we run this guy again, and again, not quite big enough. So if we step up, boom, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then it just goes back down again, right? So we're stepping up, now we can step down, boom, and this one, once it hits zero, it keeps going negative, right? So again, you could programmatically change this with an if statement like we just did for the first function. I'll leave that to you guys. So very cool, right? And even when we're stepping up and down, we can still grab this guy and move it around, right? And as always, you can still always, no matter which one of these you, you use, you can always find whatever the current thing is. Like for instance, right now it's 82. We can always grab that just by referencing this amount used var and then getting it like that. So very cool and uh, a lot of fun. I don't know about you guys, but this is one of the things that makes me really like TTK Bootstrap. It's these little things that have been added that aren't a part of regular Kinter. This meter thing is really cool. I mean, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this and it's really easy to use and very configurable. As we can see, we could change all kinds of stuff with this and it's pretty easy to use.
So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. I think it's awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter and TTK widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Check it out today. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.